Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining today. I think uh, this is uh, indeed a privilege and an honor. This is my second time that I've uh, taken part in uh, it, it kind of sharing with uh, CBN. I've done it years ago with uh, sort of like the My Journey series. This was at the Catholic Center. And uh, there was also quite a well attended. So thank you very much indeed. So for this one, uh, um, I think Arrow asked me whether do I want to share a little bit about myself since about the media industry. So I, uh, without hesitation, I said, okay. So here we go. I mean, just a bit of a background story about uh, me as well. Before that, I think I want to highlight this phrase that many of us uh, were talking about. Um, this is a phrase that, phrase that I, I kind of uh, picked up and I, I felt very close to it because um, it's a simple phrase from the Bible and certainly it's, uh, it speaks a lot to me personally. Um, do not fear for, for I am with you. Uh, do not be dismayed for I am your God. And I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And I think to me that makes a lot of sense because in my life when I look back and I think back, there are a lot of times that I, I really felt that I was down, you know. Already, I didn't feel that was I was down. So, so I I I I reflect upon it. I realized that yeah, there's always been there. As long as I, I keep my faith. As long as I continue to to reach out to him, uh, he will always uh, pick me up, no matter how. So that's 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 the reason why this phrase uh, does make a lot of sense to me. I hope you'll find out along the way after I kind of do my sharing. Okay, now this is a bit of a flashback of what I used to do. I mean, I I. I this is my baby photo of me, one of the very few baby photos of me. In the old days, we have no mobile phones, no, no iPads. So photos were all few and far in between. Uh, so this was, uh, according to my parents, seated on my favorite uh, 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 child's uh, uh, chair, my favorite chair back then. Uh, very humble, uh, simple childhood. We live in, um, they call it the three, three bedroom HDB uh, old flat. This is a long Bureau Crescent near Havelock Road. It was my hood. Um, and we like it. They call it three bedroom, but it was actually two bedrooms and one hall. Uh, we are a very average income family, mom and dad working. Uh, that we live together with uh, my grandma, uh, my auntie, who was unmarried by staying with us, kind of like looked after me, and my half elder brother. I know my half elder brother is uh, obviously with a different uh, different mother. So we've always been a, a, a very staunch Catholic family, and I grew up obviously as a cradle Catholic. Um, and went to mass and all that, Sunday school, all that, all those things I went through. Uh, my parish, by the way, is St. Bernadette's Church uh, near Zion Road, uh, opposite uh, Great World City, or opposite the used to be Zook, uh, this dance club. So, so I have a very protected childhood. My, my parents were working. My, my grandmother was also like the, the main person who looked up after me. So my grandmother and my, my auntie in that sense. Um, I, I, yeah, I go to school. I come back. I don't really hang out with my neighbors, uh, young boys and, 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 and mostly boys <laughs> to for whatever we do because the only activity I could do when I was younger was really the outside, playing outside the corridor, you know. We live in a sixth floor. That was a bit of the only activity that I do apart from school. Um, one thing that I'm thankful for is that obviously um, I I discovered pop music um, quite a quite by chance. My, my half-brother actually against a family's wishes um, Subscribe to Ready Fusion. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Ready Fusion was like the cable uh, radio station back then. This was really long ago, like in the early eighties. And uh, subscribe to it, and it was it was actually perceived as a, the more hip and trendy uh, radio station, so to speak, because they had a lot of radio pro, uh, programs from the US. They had the American Top Forty Countdown. They had the Top of the Pops in the UK. So I was very much attracted to to that, listening to that cable station, even though it was mono, it wasn't FM, by the way, it was mono, it was like a little box that the cable, this with a hard physical cable. And um, I, I made friends with uh, some of the, the so-called the DJs, the local DJs there. A uh, few inspirations that, um, uh, that, that really inspired me, um, Brian Richmond, I mean, I'm sure you all know, is another uh, Catholic figure as well, who's also in the media industry. Um, the other person who inspired me very much is Chris Ho. All right, so Chris Ho was my my so called my my hero, my young hero in a sense that he, because of the kind of music that he believed in, uh, and obviously uh, I, I I really saw him as a, very much a, a person, a young youngish person who is 
responsible, but at the same time, he's got a plan and vision for himself. And uh, we're still in touch, by the way, after all these years. And and it, when I was uh, very much younger, I, my one of my <laughs> dreams was to be a, a Catholic priest one day. Uh, and and obviously, uh, nobody said anything at home. I used to practice saying masses at home and all that. <laughs> I used to play around with it. And then, uh, obviously, when I discovered U2, I discovered uh, Madonna, and then I went my, my priest, uh, priest ambition. So my next ambition was obviously to be, uh, to be um, a broadcaster somewhere, somehow, to be a, a media person somewhere, somehow. And even in my army days, I, I, I maybe again, God inspired me and God it happened for me, I'm sure. I, I got, a, I got a, a, a part-time job as a Rediffusion uh, DJ. You know, so I, I used to, I remember I used to read uh, uh, 4D numbers, I used to read uh, et cetera, et cetera, weather report, et cetera. So I was doing that. So it was quite a thrill for me. So as a young age, when I was in NUS, I was really doing freelance work like this. Uh, people are giving tuition, were giving tuition, but I was doing DJ uh, uh, freelance work myself. So I was quite quite proud of myself. So after I graduated from the NUS, I I had managed to apply to get into then SBC, Singapore Broadcasting Corporation, as a DJ for uh, Perfect 10, uh, 987, which is their youth station. They play all the top hits. And I went in there. Um, in a short time, obviously, I, I, I built up myself and I was a... Uh, one of the younger ones, I was given a lot of exposure. I was given a chance to do television. And obviously, I, 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 I enjoyed the work very much. And I really became so interested in all aspects of, uh, of media. So very soon, I was doing TV show. I was doing blah, blah, blah. And I moved on to do uh, management work as well in like possibly 96, 97. I, I looked after my first project was Class 95. I went into to Managed class 95 at a very uh, young, I would say, young and fairly inexperienced management age. I managed to take over class 95 and managed to find uh, um, uh, the Flying Dutchman, uh, who is my personal friend, uh, Mark Van Kylenberg. And he joined uh, back then Joe Augustine on the class 95 morning show. So he became a number one morning show in Singapore. And everybody was talking about the radio station. And, and yeah, so I was happy, you know, so it was my early days of work. And I, I obviously also went into other aspects of the media. Like I said, I, I, I planned promos for the station. Uh, I dare say after all these years, uh, the Subaru Hands on the Car Challenge was created by me. Uh, it's almost 20 over years, but they're still doing it every year. Uh, and every year when that promo happens at the Neon City, it will attract like, Loads and loads of attention, uh, television, newspapers, everybody will cover, and even um, even uh, people around the region also covered it uh, because thanks to the our friends of Subaru who used that connection in the region to bring uh, attention to the event. So it was a really big event for radio, so to speak. I even had a chance to host a regular TV game show. It was uh, called Wheel of Fortune. This was on uh, prime time television, and also had a chance to travel extensively uh, because of my work. Uh, to visit radio stations overseas, to meet different radio programmers. Uh, I still remember my favorite places to go to uh, were actually um, the US and uh, and the London uh, because uh, I really, really love the radio stations there. So whenever I went, I would bring along my little transistor radio and my bags and cassette tapes and go and record the morning shows, etc. Because back then, we had no chance to listen to the radio stations from overseas. You know? So right now, of course, by the click on the button on your app, you can do that. Uh, we couldn't do that last time. So, But really, I had a really good time uh, in my early days in, in radio. Um, then in about 2007, I, I kind of decided to uh, to move on. I was there, I was approaching like 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 my late 30s and I needed to do something different. So I left Mediacorp. Uh, I was poached to join a public listed company. And this is what S. Dilo mentioned. It's a live brand limited. This is um, a company. That, this is a monster, a monster F&B operator um, that's on the Singapore Stock Exchange listed. Uh, we own 80,000, or rather we own, we, we rented 80,000 square feet in Clark Key. So you just imagine it's a block the entire block of Clark Key. So we used to do MOS, Ministry of Sound, a bar fly, we brought in Cafe Del Mar. So we did a lot of these uh, F&B outlets, uh, restaurants and pubs, etc. So in 2009, as the company was uh, restructuring, I, I, was, I was nominated to be the CEO. So I like, thank God, thank you, you know. So yeah, the, the package was attractive, was good. 
but it was it was also it came along with a lot of uh, other other things as well you know so as a as a practicing catholic it was uh, not easy because I, I knew that it was there's going to be temptations galore because i moved from the bright side to the bit of a dark side right now i operate at night you know nights don't end for me till like 3 a.m in the morning and then obviously start at like 10 11 so so my days were long my days were long and there were greater exposure to obviously the dark side of things and I, I i i told myself that i need to be connected i need to stay connected you know all the time and i, I pray hard not to be distracted because i really feel that um at this particular industry is very easy to be distracted i mean honestly um seeing people coming into the outlet and the bar and the pubs and getting all smashed up and uh, leaving uh, in a taxi, friends book for him and then throw him into the taxi. Those were the common sites, you know. So I, I've decided to kind of like stay stay connected. And I, I, I thought that the best way to do it was to stay closer to church. And I I prayed for it. And somehow, somewhere, uh, something told me that let's go be a lector from St. Bernadette's Church. So I, when they made me the CEO, I thought to kind of give back. I, I went to the church and they said, I want to be a lector. So I had no process, so I became a lector. So I've been there since uh, 2009 until now. So I'm still a lector there. Um, but funny thing is I've, I've always had constant doubts, even though I was a lector, that, that uh, somehow it was, very, it was a struggle for me personally to, to, to go to an outlet, or to, to Clark Key, for instance, go to the business, it was my workplace, uh, go to the business area and see this hooray, hooray, I call it, I call it hooray, hooray, this is like people partying, getting drunk, getting smashed, boys and girls get hooked up, etc., etc. So it was, it was a bit of a conflict for me, you know, I was like, how is this right for me? On a Friday night, on a Saturday night, then I have to proclaim the word of God on a Sunday morning at like a, 10 a.m. mass, 11 a.m. mass. So like, it's just something that just, I didn't feel comfortable. I mean, at the same time, I put there uh, uh, Father Sam, because Father Samuel Lim was a, a, a priest, a young priest in St. Bernadette's church at that time, but now he's in cathedral already. Um, so he was younger. So I asked him one day, I said, Father, do you know what I do? So he said, yeah, I know, I heard about it. So I said, you want to take a look at my workplace? So one night he came and then I brought him on a Wednesday night. All of a clock, he went to a, a bar, Wednesday night, not a weekend. So it was kind of jumping and kind of like, kind of doing well. So I looked at it, I told him, I said, Father, this is the, the, these are the issues that I struggle with all the time. Then he said, oh, then he had no answers for me. He just said, just keep on praying. Um, uh, God will, will sort it out for you. you know? So at that time, I'm like, what do you mean God will sort it out for me? I'm like, I'm, I'm like really uncomfortable now. You know? So he said, God will sort it out for me. I mean, the, the, the struggle got even more challenging when I was um, going to Thailand to explore uh, businesses for the listed company. One of the direction by the board was to expand the company. So I went to Thailand to look for spaces to kind of uh, uh, rent and go in and do our business. And it was even tempting. You know, Thailand, you know how Thailand people uh, entertain and they, 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 they hooray, hooray, you know. So there were so many temptations that I, and, and, and as a person who leads the company, I, 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 there are many times that I wish I wanted to check out and say, let's let me go back to the hotel to sleep. Uh, but I couldn't because they were like a team of people with us, with me, you know, and and obviously the opposing, the, 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 the people, the party was entertaining us, wanted to take us through to see some of the, the nightlife of Thailand. So, so it was always a, a struggle for me and I constantly uh, uh, pray and, and want to do the right thing. So then what happened was, as Father Sam said, God was sorted out. So finally, I think he sorted it out. So I had a, I was a headhunter to go back to Media Corp as the managing director for Mediacorp TV. And I thought, wow, thank, thank you, God. No, this is it, you know. So when I back, it was a 2013, uh, um, and 2013, 2014, I went back. One of my first missions was to revamp Channel 5. Uh, and I, I said, okay. I was At the peak, I was managing all the television channels except for CNA. I, I worked very hard to prove myself because I really feel that this is an, a big break for me. And, and well, constantly staying connected to the church uh, because I know and always will need him to be around me. Um, some pictures that I, I, I had when I was working in Media Corp at the time, uh, some of the personalities that you may recognize. 
And then uh, what happened was I had a setback in 2014. Um, I, I was struck down with, um, with no warning with arteriovenous malformation. Basically, a layman's term is a blood vessel is my brain just burst suddenly. I remember it was a Saturday night and um, I was watching football on t television and pow, it just went, you know. Uh, back, I was with my ex-girlfriend at her place and I was watching football and then pow, I, I just knocked out, went into a coma, no warning. So, so I was discovered fortunately very quickly and then obviously I was sent to the hospital, uh, Tantor Singh Hospital, etc. I had all the immediate help. I think again, it was uh, him arranging everything for me. Uh, I spent two months in a hospital uh, one month at home. It's actually classified as a stroke of the brain, uh, so to speak. So as people know that stroke of the brain, there are many, many side effects. But um, I, I was worried. I, I, I was certainly panicking at home because I was single. Uh, I mean, I, I got divorced. I was single. And obviously, um, uh, my parents were getting old. So there's nobody else around. So lucky my church lectors were coming to, to, to help me at the hospital as well. So it took a long time for me to recover. So the recovery process was obviously painful and, and long. Um, in end of 2016, I, after I recovered, I also decided to um, just move on. I mean, this media thing is getting a little bit... Uh, uh, tiring for me. I was also a little bit dejected looking at how the media has transformed over the years, uh, that how media is no longer the key thing anymore, how listening to radio in the morning is not the key thing anymore. People now listen to Spotify, you know. So so I kind of moved on and, and feel that I need to move on and, and smell the roses. But the year when I left, it was also a tough economy year, uh, 2016. Uh, I struck to find a new role, uh, even though as a, a highly paid uh, a, a management member in the media scene for Media Corp, I, I, I struggled to find a new role. There were just somehow no openings around. I, I prayed for God to kind of lift me up. I needed to be lifted up. And that's where I felt really down. I, I felt that why me at this time, at the peak of my life, at the peak of my career, uh, why me, you know? And... I really the struggle got a bit hard to the middle part of the year when I, I decided to, okay, let's not waste time anymore. Let's not sit at home. Let's, let's go earn some money. <laughs> so I went to drive Uber. I drove Uber with my BM5 series uh, for about six months. It was an Uber executive uh, uh, service. And I'll put on my cap, put on my sunglasses, and I'll go and drive, you know. <laughs> so but constantly staying connected to the church, so asking God to lift me up. And eventually in 2016, towards October, I was kind of headhunted to go to Phnom Penh to work as the head of corporate comms. Uh, the process was quite smooth, quite swiftly. I got, I got approved and then I, I went into uh, to Phnom Penh to work. Now, there are also another set of problems that I need to share very quickly. I know I'm kind of reaching my time's up already. Uh, being, being going to Phnom Penh was a very exciting thing for me. Uh, because the package was attractive. But there were also many concerns. I mean, but there's language, there's barriers, etc. I, I just said very quickly, like, I don't really travel to stay overseas myself for many times. Yeah, I travel, but I don't really stay overseas. But little little basic things that I was a bit unsure, like, like mm, a bit of a mummy's boy, like, mm, who's going to look after my laundry, you know? Cooking is not, not a problem because I can always pay for food. But who's going to look after my laundry? You know? Who's going to clean the house? You know? So eventually, I went to so many apartments and I found one that, wow, this one comes with laundry service and also housekeeping every day. So I quickly signed a deal. I said, okay, let's take this apartment. So this is, again is something about him reaching out to me and, and paving the way for me. And I pray very hard to, be, to have a center of strength and to be connected to the church. And... And in my first weekend there, I should remember, I stayed at a hotel and I asked the concierge to book me a taxi to bring me to a Catholic church. I even had the chicken and duck talking, you know. And then eventually, the concierge found this cab driver who sent me to this Catholic church. I'm like, goodness, this is a, a former school converted to a Catholic church. So every Sunday, it's almost like the United Nations Church, the Europeans, uh, the Chinese, Malaysians, Singaporeans, Hong Kongers, were all there for this 10 a.m. mass, you know. And so I had a wonderful time there, I became so connected to the church again. So every Sunday I was there and I made a lot of friends. I made friends with the parish priest of the church, Father Charles, who's an American. 
And those are some pictures of me at work uh, while I was in Phnom Penh. Uh, the company that I work for in Phnom Penh is a construction company. It's a monster, monster development company. It's almost their equivalent of our capital land. All right. Good friends of the Prime Minister have lunch together every Sunday night. So that kind of level of, of company. So I was there. So I was happy. So of course, after a year plus, two years, I knew that I have to come back because my parents are getting old and I'm I said, I won't come back unless I find a job. I don't want to be jobless again. So eventually, I came back. I found a job. Again, God is good. Uh, 2018, I found I returned back. I joined SPH Radio as Money FM. But this time, not as a management member, but as a presenter. So I present. I read the news. I interview people, etc. on the station. God is good. He planned the path for me. I think he calibrated me by taking me away. I'll go back there. You wait. I know. Okay kind of take me away to reset me and bring me back again. So I, I've also come back as a bit of a changed person right now. To me, uh, material needs are not the most critical. I mean, there we can. So I, do, I, I, don't, I don't have a car. I don't drive now. I don't carry designer goods. Yeah, one or two pieces of old items maybe, but I don't buy designer goods anymore. But more importantly, since my return, I think, um, I mean, this is a, a, a newspaper article about me coming back to join SPH Radio. Um, it's also for God. It's also found for me a wife. You know, I've divorced in 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 uh, 2007. First marriage is year 2000. I have no children for the first marriage. God has found me a wife. Present me with a new woman in my life. A new woman who taught me about also humility and living simply as well. And I constantly pray to Him to to take me through the different stages. So we also come across to to adopt a baby. The baby is a. Uh, uh, this picture of my wife, her name is Pim. Uh, so Pim, Pim's uh, younger sister, um, uh, while giving birth to uh, her baby, passed away. So we we took over the baby. So we have adopted the baby. Uh, her name is Mini. Uh, as our so these are pictures of me and 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 Pim. Um, so this is little Mini. Mini is now staying with uh, my in-laws in in Thailand. Uh, so we, we video call her like three times a day <laughs> just to stay connected. So other than that, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm happy right now. So again, this whole process of, of my journey is still very much uh, uh, a journey through God, with God, with me. And obviously, I, I'm also very open to help in, uh, in, in any church purposes right now. Uh, I'm still elected at St. Burns, uh, I, the, the Catholic radio I was involved. So this is a picture of me and the Archbishop uh, during the Catholic radio launch. So, so a lot of these things I'm still doing right now. And I'm, I'm happy to be involved and I'm happy to be here sharing my life story with you guys. Thank you so much.